First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters. And thanks for joining us as we care for another bit of our kit. Uh, we had a, a bivouac recently. And uh, when you get back, you know, you clean your booties, you clean your uniform. Uh, we did a video on how we go about cleaning our uniforms. Uh, you clean your mess kit, your canteen, all that good stuff. Uh, but one thing that can be easy to overlook is caring for your headwear. Um, this, uh, at our last event, I wore my Whipple all weekend and it got dirty and covered in ash from sleeping next to the campfire. And so I thought I would take you, um, along with me while I clean up my hat and talk to you about how we go about cleaning them and caring for them. And you can maybe inspire you to do a little bit more research or, um, get a few more things to care for your investments. So, um... Really, the biggest thing that you need to clean for uh, your Civil War hats or a lot of like any sort of uh, wool or felt hats is is a good hat brush. Uh, this one I just happened to get from Gordon Brothers, not a sponsor, but um, they have really good quality hat products and they make really good hats too. Um, but uh, you just you know you want to have a, a nice, soft, natural bristle brush uh, as part of your um, gear cleaning and maintenance kit. Um, it doesn't have to be this one. I'm sure you can find others on, on places like Amazon uh, or if you have a, a, a local Western store, odds are that they probably have uh, a section uh, or buy that are cowboy hats where you can um, find some of these um, tools to help maintain your hat. Now, um, all you need to do really is one, um, if, you're, if you've been hot and sweaty or maybe it rained on you, is make sure you let your hat dry naturally. Because um, you don't want to, just like you don't want to put away uh, your uniform sweaty and stinky to, to mold and mildew in the closet, or the same with your booties, uh, you want to make sure that you put your hat somewhere, if it is damp, that it can dry thoroughly. And then once it's dry, uh, you, you just brush your wool until all the dirt and dust comes off. And, um, you know, if on your brims, you know, maybe you have some uh, mud or something like that, uh, just a simple damp cloth uh, should be able to address that just fine. And uh, depending on the type of wool of your hat, uh, or maybe just personal preference, you'll want to pay attention um, if there's any nap. Uh, to your to your hat so that means like um, it's kind of like what's the grain of the wool doing and then you just kind of want to go with that and it just takes you know maybe a minute or two to have a nice uh, nicely cleaned hat ready for longer term storage so just like that my hat is dust free and ready to go and so now I, I have little over a month until our next event. So I have this, I chose this on purpose because this has kind of a unique uh, brim set up. Um, so I need a, a good way to store this. And what I like to do is uh, I make little hat stands. You can, some, you can find these online, I'm sure, or um, maybe antique stores. But, you know, the bottom's just a piece of two-by material with a dowel and a round part and it's it's however high it needs to be to keep my my hat um, off from touching the surface that I'm resting it on. So I have a, a a thicker piece on the bottom for a little bit more weight, and a a round that will fit inside the top of the hat, and then I round the the, the corners over really nice. So um, this hat I know uh, fits me perfectly because I had it custom made, and so then I'll just set it on my hat stand like that. And then I'll stick that in my closet until my next event. And you can do that for any number of hats. Um, it's kind of personal preference which way you want to go. And it kind of depends on the hat. Um, also, too, depending on the hat, if you're going to be storing it, um, something like a hat box uh, could be really good uh, to help keep the dust off and kind of keep the environment away 
uh, from your hat. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of using boxes. Um, I keep my, my booties in a shoe box with shoe trees in them uh, in between events. So that way, you know, shoe trees help control moisture. I keep all the, the dust and nasties from whatever from getting into my shoes. And I also have a window on the front so I can see which pair of shoes they are. And I can also um, keep an eye in case there's any mildew. We live in the Pacific Northwest. It's really easy for that humidity to sneak up on you. You start to see a little bit of fuzz, get in there, brush it off. Maybe throw in some silica packets or something like that to kind of help uh, absorb the moisture. So a hat box could be a good way to store your hats also. Um, but there is one more uh, little tip I want to share that many of you may not know about. And it's something I have in all of my high quality hats. Uh, so I recently picked up this 1883-89 uh, campaign hat. And um, I got it the right size. But... Uh, I have what they call a long oval head, so my head isn't uh, a perfectly round. So when I put this hat on, it was tight on the front and the back. And then if I pushed in on the sides, because there is space on the sides, if I pushed in on the sides, then the hat slid right down, fit perfectly. So I put a hat stretcher in it. Now, um, even on just about any hat you have, uh, these can be really nice uh, because if you have any moisture changes or maybe you're really hot um, or you're drying the hat out, you can put a hat stretcher in your hat to make sure to keep it from shrinking so it doesn't fit. Uh, you can also have it help you take it from a round hat to a long oval hat because it has this turnbuckle on the inside and you can actually stretch the hat out. So I needed to elongate it. And so I just cranked it, gave it a little bit more oomph, and then just let it sit. You could also steam it if you want like an immediate result, but I have so many um, historic hats that I have plenty to rotate through. So I don't mind sticking in, uh, in my hat for a week or so, so it can just naturally relax and conform to the new shape before I wear it. And then before I put it away, I'll uh, reinstall the hat jack. Uh, you can get these hat jacks just about anywhere. So typically when you have a hat like this, you store it on the crown. And so um, I got I got this one at my local boot barn. You can get them anywhere. And it has a turnbuckle. And the other thing you'll notice is these hat jacks have a taper. So, so you can see like, yeah, you can see a little bit right there. So how it kind of turns in like that. And so you want to be mindful of your taper when you install it into your hat. So it's not just for stretching, it's, it's also for maintenance. So if, um, uh, if I'm not going to wear this hat for a while, and I like the way that it fits, I'll simply install my hat jack. And then and just essentially uh, tighten it until it just stays in on its own. And that will keep that fit dead on perfect for the next time I want to wear this hat. And um, like I said, um, my Whipple fits perfect, but if I do have any sort of um, uh, disformity um, with the way that it fits, then I can put a hat jack in it and let it rest a little bit and then it'll be back to normal. Um, I don't think you really need to worry about it with your, your typical forage caps. Um, just make sure that when you're done with the weekend, you brush these also and the other thing I mean one it keeps your uniforms looking better but anytime you have foreign matter in your material um, it degrades it it's you're essentially adding it a long-term abrasive into your material um, clean wool um, keeping your wool clean also allows wool to perform at its at its best ability right wicking moisture breathing uh, all that good stuff that we like about natural fibers. So um, with my forage camp, I like mine a little more, you know, a little more crumpled, a little more field worn. So I'll just typically uh, clean it up and then um, put it in a box or just leave it in my in my closet on a flat, clean shelf 
so it can kind of stay the way that I want it to. But if I want it, I could also just, you know, put this on a hat stand too, if I wanted. So just like that. And, <clears throat> and then if you have different hats, then you have a nice little gallery uh, of your hats in your closet or wherever you store your hats. So um, I will close with one thing. I'm sure I'll get a comment asking about waterproofing your Civil War hats. You don't need to. I mean, they didn't do it. Um, but you always have some people who might be inclined. Like, oh, well, can I put some spray on it? Um, like I said, you don't need to. They didn't do it. Um, but if you were to do it, um, you would just use any product that is a, uh, a proper fit for the material that your hat is made from. But other than that, keep a good brush, maybe a hat stand and a hat jack, and your historical hat wear will last you for many, many years. Um, thanks so much for liking and subscribing. Uh, thank you for all your wonderful uh, questions and your positive comments. And if you think anyone, anyone can benefit from this video, please share it up. And we'll see you next time.